Hello and good day to you all. Uh, Navid from Edinburgh and the here. Hope you're all well and not bored of self-isolation. Um, to help you pass time for the next couple of weeks, um, we've decided to record a few lectures to go through and discuss traumatic dental injuries. The classification, diagnosis, management, and you know, scheduling reviews. What to look for, what to ask, and how to treat. To make life easier and uh, for you and to help you find uh, these lectures easier in the future for referencing, I've decided to split them per type of injury. Um, this week I'll go through the fracture injuries and next week the luxations. And I'll do it one by one so that it will be easier for you just to find the relevant uh, lecture as opposed to going through everything to be able to come to that particular uh, type of injury. So the aim of these lectures are to highlight the current guidance for the management of various forms of traumatic dental injuries to improve the outcome and the learning outcomes are for this week um, or to outline the principles of assessment uh, to be able to diagnose the common fracture injuries this week next week will be luxation uh, using clinical and radiographic signs to be able to manage the problem appropriately and effectively and to and to understand uh, the required monitoring periods and follow-ups to ensure the best outcome is achieved so okay so what you must remember is that the single most important factor in the successful management of dental trauma is time uh, the quicker you see the patient the quicker you can diagnose the problem and provide the treatment necessary to improve the outcome that's what we want which is tooth retention I'll go through the etiology today only and I'll just whiz through them you know in coming days because they're all you know it's going to be the same for all uh, types of fractures uh, basically traumatic dental injuries um, uh, and the and the, the importance of it is to understand the etiology to be able to prevent them if you can so prevention is always you know more important than management the most common cause of all injuries in both dentitions are due to falls, believe it or not. And the majority involve the upper anterior teeth, specifically central incisors, which is easy to understand why. But you must examine everything thoroughly. Uh, when you have a patient who presents with, with dental trauma, you need to examine every single tooth. So just don't go look at things that are obvious because you, you will find, believe me, so many things that are hidden when you first examine the patient. So do everything systematically and thoroughly. The risk factors can be split into oral factors such as um, protruded maxillary incisors, incompetent lips, class to div one situation, environmental or demographic like social deprivation and finally human behavior risk taking being a daredevil bashing each other in the face for no reason things like that um also lack of mouth guard while playing sports that is you know extremely you know common believe it or not uh, and we try to address that with schools um and sports clubs and also children with learning difficulties. So in these cases, prevention is very important. Provision of mouth cords, early orthodontic intervention, chilling out, you know, all of these help a lot. Now, dental trauma, as mentioned before, is best split into fracture injuries and luxation injuries. It makes life easier, helps, you know, all of us to understand it better. Um, trust me. It will help you 
a lot when it comes to quick diagnosis and management. And remember, time is crucial. Um, this week, I'll go through um, fracture injuries, one a day, and next week, um, luxation injuries. So fracture injuries are infractions, enamel fractures, enamel dentin, enamel dentin pulp, so it gets worse and worse, root, crown root, and finally, alveolar fractures. Today, we'll discuss infractions, uh, which is, in a way, the, the easiest one, if you like. So infraction is an incomplete fracture of the enamel without any loss of tooth structure. So basically a, a crack line. Um, what do you see when you examine the patient? What well, any symptomatic tooth usually? It may be a bit sensitive to cold air and touch, but it is very important for you to do your full assessment to rule out luxations and displacements and root fracture. Okay. We'll come to these later, but we're just going to do it one by one now. So it's important for you to do a full assessment. Um, and what I usually you know, do is to gently dry the teeth, visually examine them with light that is directed from left, right, you know, front, above the tooth, and you need to look at the tooth from left, right, you know, you know, front and above to make sure that you're not missing any of these crack lines. It's very important for documentation purposes. Make sure you take pictures no matter what. When you are dealing with a patient who has sustained dental trauma, please make sure you take full pictures. Um, and yeah, it is it's, it's crucial for record, record keeping. Also, on top of all of this, what I usually say and advise is that if you're doing endodontic treatment on any teeth that patients can see, make sure that before you put your rubber dam on, you investigate these teeth and you know, record any signs of infractions. Because after you take your rubber dam off, the tooth is going a bit dry. The patient may be looking at the, you know, look, checking the tooth in a mirror to see whether or not, you know, you've done any sort of thing that, you know, the patient was not expecting. And then they may notice these things. And if you've not warned them, they may think that it was because of your access cavity or, you know, rubber dam clamp. So it's always better to record these before you access teeth. Now, as you see in the diagram, an infraction is just into enamel, not dentin. And when you look at this close-up uh, photograph, uh, you see that it can be horizontal, vertical, oblique, and you may get you know, quite a few of them. So it doesn't necessarily mean that it's just the one, okay? But if you've not lost any tooth tissue, that's infraction. If you've lost bits, then it's, it's something else that we'll discuss uh, in, in, in the coming days. Radiographic examination should be really unremarkable, normal appearance of the uh, root, no PDL enlargement, no socket out outline should be visible, everything should look and you know, feel the same as what you expect. Um, no fracture line in the root, etc. The management is simple. In primary teeth, just monitor, reassure uh, the parents, the children. In permanent teeth, again, monitor in most cases. Um, they don't really need anything done to them. If very sensitive, uh, consider etching and sealing with unfilled resin. I personally try Durofat or desens desensitizing agents. Uh, the modern ones are pretty good, actually. I use them first before raising ceiling, but that's me. Some people just go straight to etching and bonding. Um, if aesthetics is a concern, just run the smallest round 
uh, diamond where you can find and you know the smallest possible the microscopic ones almost um, and run it you know into the crack just to create a channel and then fill it with composite um, if you have a completely shattered enamel like if you're talking about the, the, the most severe case uh, just try a direct composite veneer to explain the bits together and reduce sensitivity I mean, that should help that should help and you know improve the the aesthetics as well um, monitor them uh, annually clinically and radiographically doing sensibility testing and all that um, it's just you know very simple to to do but the things that you are going to look for is just the tooth should remain positive to sensibility testing no pain swelling no discharge sinus no mobility no increase you know periodontal pocket depth no sign of apical radiolucency when you look at the radiograph no sign of resorption so you need to make sure that you have a systematic way of addressing this so it would be easy like a tick box every single time you review the patient okay so to sum up, um, in infractions, just reassure and monitor annually, check symptoms on a review, uh, and do your clinical sensibility and radiographic assessments. Okay. So, you know, have it as a systematic way of doing things. Okay, so that's it for today, folks. I hope you found this uh, short lecture helpful uh, tomorrow i will go through enamel fractures um but while you are at it please check uh dental trauma uk website we're a charity set up in 2014 yeah 2014. Uh, to promote to promote the best way of the best way to save traumatized teeth and improve the outcome in general practice and hospitals by providing advice and support. We also provide public information uh, about uh, evulsion injuries. Uh, please check the website and become a member as well. It's only uh, 30 pounds uh, to support the charity and uh, you will get free access to full IADT trauma guide, free CPD lectures, access to videos, patient information leaflet that you can customize for your practice and just give to your patients for you know, better awareness. And also you get a conference discounts, which is an annual event. Uh, check the website, please, um, dentaltrauma.co.uk and become a member and stay safe and healthy. Um, you take care. I'll come back tomorrow for the enamel factors. And uh, yeah, uh, look after yourselves and family. Bye for now. Cheers.